Praise the Lord, bless everyone of you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Corbin Nash with Come Church out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And right now, we're going to get into our scripture today, which is in Luke 16 and 19. And in Luke 16, beginning at verse 19, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of souls and designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his souls. And in verse 22 it says, And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels uh, into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and said Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And in verse 26 it says, And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which will pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would have sent me into my father's house, for I have five brethren, and he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Then finally in verse 30 he says, and he, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Now I'm going to read verse 31 too that says, and, and he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Now praise the Lord, bless you. Uh, we, we, this is a continuation of a uh, study we have going called Who Are You? And in order to be an effective Christian, we must know who we are. A lot of people, when you ask them who they are, they tell you about what they do instead of who they are. But the Bible specifically tells us who we are. Uh, we are royal priesthood, we are holy nation, we are peculiar people, we are ministers of reconciliation. Amen? Amen. So last uh, few weeks we've been studying uh, who we were. Uh, before we got into who we were, we also studied uh, who we were not. And uh, in Ephesians uh, 2 and 2, it says we were, uh, we were uh, in a position where we walked according to the course of this world. In uh, Ephesians 2 and 12, it says we were, we were without Christ being aliens. In Ephesians 5 and 8, it says ye were sometimes darkness. And in 1 Peter 2 and 25, it says for ye were as sheep going astray, but are now returned to the shepherd and bishop of our souls. So we were as sheep going straight. Some man once said that if you know if you put a sheep in an open field and it's good things to eat, most sheep will uh, eat themselves lost. In other words, they never look up. You know, they just continue to eat. And a lot of times in the world system, we were lost. And uh, we didn't know which way to go. We didn't have a shepherd. And we, we were lost. Amen. So we were like sheep, lost. Amen. But then uh, we discussed the fact in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 uh, that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, behold, all things have become new. So all those old things have passed away, all things have become new. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then we uh, uh, went on to explain further that uh, we are trichotomous. In other words, we are three part entities. We're spirit, soul, and body. Uh, in 2 Corinthians 4 16, it says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. He's talking about the spiritual man. Yes. And then uh, I gave you a definition last week of the soul. It's the intellect, sensibilities, and will. It is the part of man that reasons and thinks. It deals with the mental realm. So anytime you're dealing with the mental realm, anytime you're dealing with the intellect, the sensibilities, and will, you're dealing with the soul. And then finally, uh, uh, the Bible mentions the outward man. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 1, it says, we, so we know that if we, if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands eternal in heaven. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. So the Bible lets us know that we're a tri In other words, we're a three-part entity. And in the book of Romans, it lets us know what to do with it. Because in Romans 1, uh, 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, that's the least you can do. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And then finally, we went to the book of Luke, which we started today, Luke 16 chapter, beginning in verse 19 through verse 31. And in Luke 16 chapter, it tells us, or gives us an example where you had two people, uh, the rich man and Lazarus. And the Bible describes the rich man as one which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. day. And he described Lazarus as the baby which was laid at his gate full of souls. Now I was uh, uh, <clears throat> talking about this last week and we know the way the story goes uh, that both men died because in verse 21 it says, and the desire to be fed with the crust which fell from the rich man's table. They talk about the uh, Lazarus. He said, moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. And then in verse 22 it says, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And he lift and in hell he lifted up his eyes. So we see that Jesus is telling the story here. And uh, the place, praise the Lord, amen, he's telling the story here. And the place that, uh, that he's telling about is that after two men died, they end up in hell. Amen. And uh, if you look at the word hell, I mean, in the Greek, you see that that Greek word is Hades. And the Hades, is, uh, uh, is, is, is the definition of Hades is the unseen world. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we see that the, the scene here was in hell or Hades, depending on whether you use the English or Greek. And uh, we, we see that on hell, yeah, it tells you a little bit about hell because in verse 26, and uh, it tells us, it says that, uh, uh, it says that in verse 26, it says, but all, and besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they, uh, for they which would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So he was telling us that in Hades is a great gulf fixed. And based upon the story, one part uh, of that, in other words, hell has two compartments, you might say. And one compartment is paradise or Abraham's bosom. And the other compartment is a place of torment. So in this particular story, uh, Jesus was telling us that, you know, two, both men ended up in Hades. Now last week I told you that this place was there until, uh, and Hades still exists, but, uh, but uh, last week I was telling you that this is the way things used to happen before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's right. Okay, so before the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, everybody used to go to Hades or to hell. Amen. And there was a righteous side of hell, which we call paradise, and there was a place of torment. Okay? But what I, I failed to tell you is that... Uh, uh, Today, we do not have to go uh, uh, to Hades. That's right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, today, all believers go to heaven. Amen. Okay. Because Jesus, after his death, he went to Hades. That's right. And he emptied Hades, the righteous side of Hades out, That's and right. led captivity captive. That's right. and, I, and I'll show you that in a minute. Amen. He led captivity captive. So today, if you die as a Christian, you go directly to heaven. Amen? Now, how do you know we go to heaven? Well, it's 2 Corinthians. Look at 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 8, it says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the what? Body and to be present with the Lord. Well, where is the Lord? The Lord right now is in heaven because he rose from the dead. Praise the Lord. Amen? So that scripture implies that we, after we die, we're going to be with Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, uh, well, somebody said, 
Well, I just said that Jesus, you know, Jesus died. He went to Hades. But what happened once he went to Hades? Well, when he went to Hades, in Ephesians 4 and 8, it tells us a little bit. Because in Ephesians 4 and 8, it says, Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first to the lower parts of the earth? And then it says, he that descended in the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. Well, who was that? That's Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. He descended first. He went into Hades. But then after he went into Hades, he ascended into heaven. And that's where Jesus is right now. And the saints of God, if you, if you want to see Jesus, you're going to have to go to heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today, no one is in the paradise section of Hades today. That's right. The only people that are in Hades are the people who are the unrighteous or the sinners, praise the Lord, and they are there in the place of torment. That's right. But if you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior and you believe in, uh, with your heart in his death, burial, and resurrection, you are righteous in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. You're the righteous God in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, Hades is not to be confused uh, with the hell we think of. Praise the Lord, amen. Uh, the hell we think of is in Genesis 20 and 10. Praise the Lord, amen. And it's really not hell, it's the lake of the fire. So in Genesis, or no, not Genesis 20 and 10, Revelation 20 and 10. Y'all go to Revelation 20 and 10, and it says, and the devil that deceived them was cast and to the what? The lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. So the first people that was in the lake of fire was the beast, false prophet, praise the Lord, amen, the beast and the false prophet, praise the Lord, amen. And uh, he said, and the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day, for, uh, day and night forever and ever. So uh, the book also tells us in the book of Revelation that uh, Hades or hell was cast into the lake of fire. That's right. So, uh, so Hades will itself be cast into the lake of fire. That's so right. a lot of times when we think of hell, we think about the lake of the fire, amen? But it's not the same hell as we talked about in the book of uh, Luke 16 chapter. It's right. not that Hades because that Hades is going to be eventually cast into the lake of fire and forever and ever. People are going to be there. Their loss will be there forever and ever. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. But I don't know about you. I will go to heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to go to heaven. That's right. Praise the Lord. And when I die, praise the Lord. Second Corinthians says five and eight says, "We are confident, I say, and willing, whether to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord." So if I'm absent from the body, which means I'm dead, the body is dead. Praise the Lord. Again, right. I'm going to be present with the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, somebody said, well, you know, you said hell was going to be in the lake of the fire. What scripture is that? Well, look at Revelation 20 and 14. Somebody said Revelation 20 and 14. Revelation 20 and 14. In Revelation 20 and 14, it says, and the dead and the death and hell were cast into the lake of the fire. This is the second death. You see that? Yeah. So death and what? Hell. Both of them were cast into the lake of the fire. This is the second death. Amen. 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 And, and so what happens is that you got to realize, praise the Lord, amen, that, uh, praise the Lord, amen, that uh, uh, death and hell will be cast into the lake of the fire. See, you know, hell really wasn't made for man. The lake of fire was made for devil and his angels. Well, Pastor, that's where you get that from. But look in Matthew 25, 41. In Matthew 25, 44, 1, what does it say? It says, Then shall he say also to them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the what? Devil and his angels. Amen. Devil and his angels. So it's prepared for the devil and his angels. Praise the Lord. Amen. So now we have it. I've given you a summary of, you know, uh, what Hades is in Luke, the 16th chapter. And Hades was just a place where all spirits went prior to the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But after the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all the righteous people 
uh, went to heaven. And if you're righteous and you're saved, if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you will go to heaven also and you will be with Jesus. Praise the Lord.